What's going on guys, it's Paul here, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the channel before, but I used to be a freelance video producer as my full-time job, and I say that just to provide some context as to why I tend to be pretty picky when it comes to the quality of my photos and videos. So with that said, I figured I would do a video and just show you guys all of the camera gear that I carry on my hiking and backpacking trips, and I'll also go over a couple of options that may not be what I carry, but depending on your situation and your purposes, they could be a good option for you. So let's get right into it. And before I get into talking about the cameras themselves, I figured I would start by talking about all of the camera accessories, mostly because most of this stuff is going to be applicable regardless of what type of camera you use. So with that said, I'll start off with tripods. If you follow my channel, you may have seen me talk about this guy before. This is the Pedco Ultrapod. And of all the gear I'm gonna talk about today, I don't carry all of it on every backpacking trip. I kind of pick and choose depending on my purposes for every individual trip. But this is one item that goes with me on every backpacking trip. These things are great because they're only about $10. They're really lightweight and they're very versatile. They have little legs that you can fold out and then just set that on the ground or a rock or wherever. It has a Velcro strap built in and I've been impressed with how strong this little Velcro strap actually is. So with that, you can strap it to a tree limb or whatever you want to while you're hiking or the way that I typically use it is on my trekking pole. If I'm on a trip where I'm planning to primarily use my cell phone for pictures and videos, then I'll take one of these little cell phone mount adapters. It has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom, so that will screw directly to the top of the tripod. And then I can use it just to get more stable pictures and videos, or I can use it as a selfie stick. But if I'm on a trip where I'm primarily planning to use either an action cam or one of my larger cameras to capture photos and videos, oftentimes in those cases, I'm gonna leave the cell phone mount adapter at home. And instead, what I'm gonna have mounted to this tripod is this tiny little camera mount adapter from Leo Photo. Very small, lightweight, very solid camera mount adapter that I just screw to the top of the tripod. And then that uses Arca Swiss camera plates, which is what I'm using on most all of my cameras. So next I'll talk about what has been my go-to backpacking tripod for the past year for trips where I actually think I'll need a tripod, and that is the Oban CTT-1000L. They also have a shorter version of this. This is the L, which is the long version. And this is actually marketed as a table tripod, but the cool thing about this is that it actually extends to be quite tall. I'll put the maximum height right over here because I don't remember off the top of my head, but that's as it stands right now. And this is a very, very sturdy tripod. It's made of carbon fiber, so it's super lightweight, very strong. But what's cool about this tripod and what I think actually kind of takes it beyond just use as a table tripod and actually makes it usable as a ground standing tripod is that it comes with this optional center column. So you can use it just like this as is, or I can twist this ball head to unscrew it from the top of the tripod. And then in its place, I can mount that center column, just screw it onto the tripod. And then on top of the column, I can remount the ball head up here. And now with all of that connected, if I extend the legs and this column, this is gonna be a little bit harder to get in the camera frame now, but if I set this on the ground, with everything fully extended, it reaches this maximum height. Now, when you add that center column, it does make it a little more wobbly. Still a very strong tripod. I would have no issues putting five or six pounds on top of here. I really like this included ball head that it comes with. Very solid head, and that's that same Arca Swiss mount on the top. You can use this center column by itself as just a carbon fiber, super lightweight selfie stick. And this is what I use for my 360 camera. So next up, I'll talk about camera clips. And I definitely recommend getting one of these if you're using anything more than just your phone, because these little clips allow you to mount the camera right to the shoulder strap of your backpack. And then it's really easily accessible if you see something that you wanna get some pictures and videos of. You can quickly pop the camera off, do what you need to, and then really easily just clip it back in and keep hiking. Now by far the most popular is the Peak Design Capture Clip. 
It's been around for a few years. They've made a couple of different versions and it is a very solid clip. It functions really well and I would recommend it. However, I more recently, because they just released this a couple of months ago, have switched to using the Polar Pro Traverse camera clip and it functions very, very similar to the Peak Design Capture Clip, but there are a few things that set this apart that I think have made this my favorite. Now this is probably gonna sound like a very minor thing, but the biggest issue I've always had with the Peak Design Clip is how close together the two mounting bolts are. 90% of my backpacks, even my day packs, have a shoulder strap wider than those two bolts. The Traverse has a about an extra half an inch of width between the mounting bolts. With the Peak Design clip, you have to press this little lock in on the side and then the clip will slide out and you can kind of see that lock right there and then you can clip it back in. But I've always found that I kind of have to use two hands, one to push the lock in and one to pull the camera out. Now with the traverse mount on the other hand, it uses a slightly different mechanism where it rotates to release the clip. And what I found is that that's a lot easier to do with just one hand. But if you are say climbing up really rough terrain and you're worried about your camera swinging off, they do have a little lock up here on the top. So you can slide that locked and now you don't have to worry about the camera coming off. And the final difference that I like about the traverse with the traverse plate mounted on the bottom of the camera is that to mount the camera back on the clip after you've used it, you don't have to do any sliding or twisting or anything. You just line it up, press it in, and you're good to go. Now, the cool thing about both of these clips is that the little plate that it comes with is Arca Swiss compatible, which means that when you're using this tripod, for example, you don't have to swap plates or anything. It will mount directly to the ball head. So moving along, the next thing that I'll mention is the light that I carry if I anticipate needing to do any pictures or videos at night. And that is the Lytra Torch. This is the 2.0 version. It is super bright. I believe it has a max output of 800 lumens, starting at 100, and then it gets super bright. It also has a strobe. This thing is built like a tank. I believe it's waterproof to 60 feet, so you could dive with this if you wanted to. And it's USB rechargeable. So an excellent little lightweight, very rugged light. Highly recommend it if you're gonna be doing any videos at night while backpacking. And it also comes with this little diffusion filter just to cut down on the, the shadows and the harshness. The light also comes with this cold shoe mount. So if you want to, you can mount it directly to the top of your camera. Next up is something very important and that is the microphone. For a long time, the go-to backpacking microphone was the Rode Video Micro. And for good reason, it's a very light, very compact microphone. It's fairly inexpensive and it doesn't require any battery power. So you don't have to add batteries or recharge it. Well, this is the Deity D4 Duo, which was just released earlier this year. And I think that the king has been dethroned. As for the similarities, the mount of this microphone is almost identical. It comes with a coiled cable and it also comes with the Dead Cat windscreen. All of those are basically the exact same as the Rode microphone. However, this one is two grams lighter, so basically the same weight. But what really sets this microphone apart is how many features this thing has packed into it. First of all, this is not just one microphone, it's technically two. This one has a mic capsule on this end and on this end. So for example, if you want to switch between recording someone in front of the camera or vlogging, but then you also want to record from behind the camera, you don't have to spin the mic around. What this does is it records the front and the rear microphones separately into separate audio channels. So your left is gonna be one microphone, your right channel is the other, and then you can mix those in editing. However, if you don't want to do that, there is a switch on the top here. If you can see that, if you switch it to the back there, that's recording the front and back. If you switch it to the front, that only records this microphone 
all into the stereo left and right channels. So the next thing that I'll just briefly mention are SD cards. And for the last four or five years, I've been exclusively using Samsung Evo micro SD cards. I like to use the micro SD because I can always use them in my drones and action cams, but then it comes with the full size SD adapter, so I can easily use it in my larger cameras. But I have had zero issues with these, with cards failing or becoming corrupt. I've had no issues recording 4K 100 megabit per second video to these cards, even for hours at a time. And the primary reason that I recommend them in this video for hiking and backpacking is that these cards are IPX7 waterproof. They say they're certified to be good in salt water for up to 72 hours and they have some type of crazy operating range. If I remember correctly, it's from negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. For recharging my devices while I'm on the trail, I've recently been using the Nightcore NB10000. I also just did a full review video of this, so you can check it out up here if you want to see more about this battery bank, but super lightweight, 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank, and with that, what I use is this Anchor power cable. I've been using Anchor cables for years and they've always lasted really well. And if you're gonna be going out into the back country and you're gonna be really dependent on your cable, make sure you go with one that is good quality. So the cable itself is micro SD, but it comes attached with two adapters on the end. So one is for lightning, for charging Apple devices, and the other is USB-C. So I'm able to carry just this one lightweight, very rugged cable and charge all of my devices with that. Up next is another item that I've just recently started using from Polar Pro. It's their Defender lens cover, which as you can see is a nice rubberized, outside and then it is a hard plastic center there to really protect the lens. What I've realized with especially backpacking is that the lens cap that comes with your lens, for one, they're, they're kind of delicate, so it's easy to break, especially while hiking. And I've noticed that they can easily get bumped and knocked off of the lens. And the other issue is that because these are so small, it's really easy to slide them in your pocket and then forget to put it back on your lens, which is not good when you're hiking with your camera mounted up here. It'd be really easy for a branch or something to smack the lens and damage it. So I've really been enjoying using this because it pretty easily just pops over the front of the lens. It protects it. And I've noticed that when I pop it off, it's large enough that I don't forget to put it back on my camera whenever I'm done. Now the last accessory that I wanna cover is rain protection. So for a while what I was doing is just carrying my camera and also a gallon Ziploc bag. And if it started to rain, I would just put the camera in the gallon Ziploc bag and put that in my pack. And that does work. But the issue that I had with that is for times when it was just kind of sprinkling, I didn't really wanna go through taking my pack off, putting this in the bag where I can't reach it. And it was just a little bit of a hassle, especially for light rain, but I didn't want to leave my camera exposed to it. So what I've recently been using is this Spider Holsters rain cover. It has a little clip, so you can just clip it to your backpack wherever. And it's really simple. You just open it up and it will pop out and you can keep the camera mounted on your shoulder strap you drape this over the camera and then it has a little drawstring to cinch it up. I still, however, always carry a backup of a gallon Ziploc bag in my backpack just in case if it's really raining hard or if I were to get a hole in this or whatever, I wanna know that I always have some type of rain protection for my expensive camera. Okay, finally, we can get into the more exciting stuff, which is the cameras themselves. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'll start at the lowest barrier to entry and then I'll work my way up from there. And starting off, we of course have the cell phone, which just over the last couple of years, cell phone cameras have gotten really, really good. And you can now take excellent quality photos and videos all just from your cell phone. But there've been other improvements too that make this a lot more suitable for backpacking and hiking. Like for example, that battery life has improved. This is the iPhone XR, which I've been using for the past two years and still has excellent battery life. Uh, in addition to that, 
A lot of cell phones these days have a pretty decent water resistance, so you don't have to worry about your phone getting wet if it rains. And in addition to all of that, there's a good chance you're already taking your cell phone, so no additional weight there. Now next up, what I'm gonna talk about is action cams, but I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a level up in quality from your smartphone. It's more so a level up in functionality. Now, when it comes to action cams, what you're probably familiar with are GoPros, and GoPros are excellent action cams. They've been around for a while, so they've kind of gotten all of their kinks worked out, and especially their most recent one, the Hero 9, they've made some excellent upgrades that make it a really great action cam. But what I'm using as of right now is the Insta360 ONE R, and this has some features that really set it apart from a GoPro. Now at first glance, this does look a lot like a GoPro because it's really the same form factor, but if I pop it out of the case, What's cool about this camera is that it's a modular design. So this battery on the bottom here, I can pop that off and then I have a screen module on this side and then a camera module on this side and I can pop those apart. If I want to, instead of having the screen behind me, if I want to use it more in a vlog style setup, I can pop it apart, snap them back together and now I have the screen and the camera facing the same direction. And then I would just pop the battery back on the bottom. The other cool thing about this is not just that you can move the screen around, but they also have a module for a 360 camera. If you've never used 360 video, essentially it just captures video in every direction around you. And then you can do some pretty cool stuff with that in post. You can reposition the angle. You can do stuff that looks super wide. And the selfie stick is in the blind spot of the camera. So basically when you're carrying this, it almost looks like the camera is just floating out in midair. Now next up, I'm gonna talk about the drone that I use, but I really quickly wanna throw out a disclaimer that a lot of people are not aware of all of the laws and regulations that exist with drones. And the laws are also constantly changing, so I'm not really gonna go into the specifics in this video, but just know that from my experience, I would say about 75% of the places where I go backpacking, those places are no-fly zones for drones. In the US, some laws differ from state to state, some laws are national, but what you need to know is that there are a lot of places that are no-fly zones. You also have to pay attention to things like you can't fly over people, you can't fly over roadways. There are just a lot of regulations. I just want you to be aware that you can't just go pick up a drone and go fly it whenever and wherever you want to. Make sure that if you are looking into a drone, research all of the current laws and regulations before you dive in. So with that said, the drone that I use is the DJI Mavic Mini, which I would say that for the weight, this is gonna be the best video and photo quality you'll get from a drone. This drone weighs 249 grams and you can shoot 2.7K video with it. Now this is the DJI Mavic Mini, they recently released the Mini 2, and they made a few upgrades, one being that the Mini 2 can shoot 4K video. However, despite the fact that the Mini 2 is the same weight of the drone, they upgraded the controller, and when they did that, they also made the controller much larger and about five ounces heavier. So being that when you're backpacking, you're concerned with the weight of the controller and the drone, you are gonna be at a weight increase of about five ounces if you were to go with the Mini 2. DJI does have other great drones that are of the same form factor, but slightly larger, such as the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air, and you are gonna get better video quality out of those drones, but one of the issues is that not only are the drones slightly heavier, but this is the only one that can be charged over USB. These are the batteries that the Mavic Mini uses, very small, lightweight batteries. If you get the Fly More combo, it comes with this charging case and three batteries. They charge in a bay like this. One cool thing about this though is that if you have extra drone battery left in this, you can actually use this as a battery bank to charge other devices like your cell phone. Now moving more into real cameras, 
The next step up would technically be a point and shoot camera. So that would be one of those smaller cameras that you used to see all over the place with a single lens attached so you can't change out the lenses. However, cell phone cameras have gotten so good that most of those have really become obsolete. Earlier this year, Sony did release the ZV-1, which is a point and shoot camera. I haven't personally used it myself, but from everything I see, it does look like an excellent point and shoot. But the only reason that I would recommend going with that is if you are looking for something that's an upgrade from your cell phone, but you still want ease of use and the lightest option possible. If those are your primary goals, then the ZV-1 would be an excellent option. However, it's not the cheapest upgrade. So with that, getting into interchangeable lens cameras, I was a Canon shooter for a long time, and then about four years ago, I switched over to Sony, and I've been with Sony gear ever since. These days, both Sony and Canon make some really excellent cameras, so I would say as long as you go with their newer stuff, you really can't go wrong with either one. So this will definitely not be an exhaustive list, but just to give you some options as a starting point, starting on the lower end of interchangeable lens mirrorless cameras, a really popular backpacking camera is the Canon M50. And for the price, it is a really excellent camera. You can get really good video quality out of it, and it's fairly lightweight. The main reason that I would say you may want to skip over that and upgrade to something a little better would be the M lens mount. The M series of cameras uses the Canon M lens mount, and it's only the lower end Canon cameras that uses that. So if you ever wanted to upgrade your camera body, you would have to change out your lenses. So if you're able to spend a little bit more on the front end, you could get something that would set you up a lot better for down the road. Now my recommendation for that next step up would be the Sony a6100, which is a really excellent mirrorless camera, really similar to this one actually. Uh, it was just released, I believe this past year, so it's still fairly new. It's a really lightweight camera. It weighs about the same as the Canon M50 and it uses the Sony E-mount lenses. So your lenses would be able to stick with you as you move up. Stepping up from the A6100 would be this camera, which is the A6400. Basically all the videos on this channel over the past year and a half have been filmed on this camera. Really excellent quality, has the flip up screen so you can actually see yourself from in front of the camera. That's kind of a more recent addition to the Sony cameras. Overall, it's been an excellent workhorse of a camera for photo and 4K video. The only downside would be that for handheld stuff, especially handheld video, it does not have in-body image stabilization. For that, you would have to go to the A6600, which is a slight upgrade from this one. Now, so far, all of these cameras that I've mentioned are what is known as a crop censored camera, which just means that the image sensor of the camera is slightly smaller than what is known as a full frame camera. And while I'm not gonna go through all of the different benefits of full frame versus crop censored, there are some various image quality benefits that you get in going up to full frame. So with that, making that final upgrade up to a full frame camera, what I would recommend is the camera that you've been watching this video on so far, which is the Sony a7C. Basically what Sony did with the a7C is they took their most popular full frame camera, the a7 III, they made some improvements to it, and then they stuffed it all into a much smaller and lighter camera body. One that's just barely larger than this one. So I would say that this camera is definitely targeted at people like hikers and backpackers. Now I do want to briefly talk about camera lenses. However, the lens rabbit hole is deep and dark. We could easily talk about lenses for an entire video series, but just to kind of briefly talk about it as it relates specifically to hiking and backpacking, in most cases, the kit lens, the lens that will likely come with your camera, will be a pretty good option for backpacking just because they're made to be a good all around lens and they're often fairly lightweight. The downside to kit lenses is that you don't usually get the best image quality out of them. So when it comes to selecting a lens other than the kit lens, that's where it's going to start to vary a lot depending on what your purposes are and what you're hoping to document or capture on your trip. But I would say that for backpacking, whatever you do, make it your goal to carry just one lens. Carrying just one lens is of course gonna be lighter weight than carrying multiple lenses, but there are a lot of other benefits just in not having to change out lenses. You don't have to worry about the time it takes to change lenses. You don't have to worry about while you have the lens apart, getting dust or dirt on your sensor. So when it comes to selecting what your one lens should be, 
that's where it's going to greatly depend on what you're hoping to capture, what you want to document on your trip. So if you mostly want to just do vlogging type stuff, you want to record yourself or you want wide open landscapes, in that case you can easily go with some type of wide angle lens like this one. This is the Sigma 16mm f1.4. It's not the lightest lens out there as far as crop censored lenses go. However, the image quality from this lens is excellent and it's decently priced too. Now, if you do want to go with a wide angle lens, but you also want to go with the lightest possible option, both Sony and Canon and probably some others as well make what's called pancake lenses. And as you can probably tell by the name, they are very small, flat lenses. They're also fairly cheap as well. But the only issue with those is that they're kind of like the kit lens in the sense that they don't give the best image quality. On the opposite end of wide angle, if the only thing you want to do is capture wildlife, then of course you could go with a telephoto lens. But if you're like me and you fall into a mid-range there, so you want to be able to vlog, you want to document, you want to capture landscapes, but you also want to be able to get some nice close-up shots and get maybe some wildlife, in that case, you're going to want to go with some type of all-in-one zoom. So that is what I have right here. This is my all-around zoom lens. It's the Tamron 28 to 200 millimeter. So it's definitely fairly wide on the wide end, but then I can also zoom in pretty far. This is uh, not the cheapest all-around zoom out there, but it's also not the most expensive. Um, but this is a full-frame lens, so it's primarily made for these full-frame cameras. Just recently, within the last couple of weeks, Tamron also released the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter specifically for crop censored cameras. So those are both great options if you're looking for really good image quality. Again, all around zooms, there are a ton of them out there. So you could definitely find something to fit your budget range. So I hope this video was not too scattered. I know I was trying to overview a lot of information all in one video, but if you found it helpful, you can let me know by giving the video a like. You can also leave a comment down below if you have a question about any of this gear or just let me know what your favorite backpacking camera gear is. Uh, you can subscribe if you want to see more of my content in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.